the unique characteristics of the place where my father was born and grew up, the village of Kamilari in South Crete, are rapidly changing, and with those changes, fewer things are left for the ones who care to remember. To preserve the memories of the local population and their everyday life, I started developing some applications that will hopefully help with that. Jokingly, I describe this effort as the Facebook of our close ancestors, a digital way to strengthen our connection with the place, respecting the legacy and the unique characteristics of the area that was formed in hundreds of years of history, and they are exactly those characteristics that will be valued more and more in the future. I will present in a few videos the applications that I develop for the Cultural Committee of Kamilari and aim on the preservation of the intangible cultural heritage of the area. These applications are a WordPress website, Epiwigo CMS photo repository website which stores the old photos, a leaflet web map with the toponyms and other geographical related information, and a virtual tour that will serve at the same time as a virtual reality application. Kamilari is a small village in South Crete where a lot of changes in the physiognomy of the landscape and the population profile are happening fast, mostly due to the touristic activities in the wider area. Even though the majority of the locals embrace these changes, there is no denial that finding a way to preserve the intangible heritage of the village will benefit all. A place that keeps a unique character and does not turn its back to the local history and the people that formed it, earns the appreciation of locals and foreign people alike, and paves a way to a more sustainable future. The preservation of old photographs plays an important role in this effort, because old photos connect us to the past and to our recent history. Through these photographs, we discover the life, habits and relationships of our close ancestors. Preserving them allows us to keep alive the memory of past generations and share this cultural heritage with future ones. Preserving photographs is also a way of learning about changing times and social conditions. As well, it is a way to help us appreciate the present by understanding the hardships of the past. The main focus, at least in this phase, is the discovery, digitization and preservation of the photos from the inhabitants of the village. Unfortunately, the photos are rather hard to find and the people are not actively involved at this time in the process. Hopefully as more and more photos are discovered and restored, more locals will come forward to contribute their photos or help with the identification of the people and other information in relation to the digitized photos. These photos are either scanned or photographed in place if there is difficulty in moving them or extracting them from where they are found. All the photos are imported into a Lightroom catalogue where many of Lightroom's capabilities to record additional information for these files are used. These capabilities are the ability to tag persons, the ability to geolocate the location from where the photos are taken, the ability to change the date of acquisition, the ability to add and modify keywords and other metadata information. After the enhancement and restoration of some photos, all the versions are stored in the same catalogue. So, one photo can have more than one version. In the simplest form of enhancement, all the modifications are done in Lightroom, using the sliders to alter the photos to boost contrast and sharpness. However, in most cases, Photoshop is also used to clean and enhance the files and do some basic restoration work. There are also cases where a combination of Photoshop and other AI tools are used for more advanced editing and restoration. In all the cases where Photoshop is used, a new version of the photo is created and stored in Lightroom's catalogue. These files will be exported with all the metadata which include date, location and keywords, and will be imported into a Piwigo photo repository. Piwigo is an open source CMS that specializes in organizing photos and presenting them and their respective information via a website. It allows the ability to create albums, tag photos, 
and utilize advanced search capabilities to find images more easily. The Kamilari Piwigo website stores the photos that have been scanned and restored, and it is there that users can find, download, and suggest edits to the photos of the repository. These photos, as already mentioned, may have several versions, since some are restored and colorized. The users can access the files in a high-resolution format, or a lower resolution for preview purposes, or for sharing them on social media, etc. The metadata of the photos, like tags, titles and dates, are handled only in the Lightroom catalog, and are only displayed on the Piwigo website. When a photo is geolocated in Lightroom, this information is also automatically imported into Piwigo, and from Piwigo it can be displayed in the leaflet map. The tags identify a person in a photo, and if there is a number inside brackets, this means that this particular person is also present in the family trees, and the number is the member ID. This ID is used to connect the genealogical trees info page of a member with the photo repository for the photos to be displayed in this info page. To show the area as it is today, and at the same time, Offer the information in an alternative and more interactive way, a virtual tour of the area is developed. From several points of interest, aerial spherical panoramas are offering views to the wider area around the village of Camelari. These include archaeological sites like Gortina, Festos, Hagia Triada and Tholos Minoan tomb of Camilari. Other than offering scenic views of the mentioned points of interest, there are toponyms, such as point and polygon hotspots, that complement the map of the area. The virtual tour is developed in 3D Vista, which gives the ability to view this website as a VR experience as well, if viewed of course from a device that supports VR mode. These devices are a variety of VR headsets, or Android smartphones with a use of VR cardboard. In the virtual tour, there is also the ability to auto-play the tour, to offer it as a form of a slideshow. This can be useful in the case that the virtual tour is displayed on a touchscreen and auto-plays while it is not in use. When any user touches the screen, then the auto-play stops and the user can take over the virtual tour navigation. The map that is embedded is the web map that we will see next and includes the position of the panoramas available offering an extra way to navigate to the places of the tour. The web map is a leaflet JavaScript implementation that contains several base maps like Google Maps, OpenStreetMap ESRISE Roadmap, and more can be added in the future. The spatial geographical data that are plotted on the map are the locations of the panoramas that are shot for the virtual tour the local toponyms and the location of the acquisition of the restored old photos. The other geographical data that is visible is a selection of OpenStreetMap data that helps in the identification of the plotted area when the raster maps are overlaid on top of the base maps. These overlaid raster maps exist mostly to showcase the temporal changes during the past 60 years and can be turned on and off by using the respective checkboxes that appear when the user activates them for the first time. These overlay maps are air photos from the 1960s and 1990s, a 1 to 5,000 map from the 1970s, and a 1 50,000 map from the 1990s. There is also a map of Crete from the 1860s. The locations of the toponyms and the virtual tour panoramas are added and edited in QGIS, which interacts with the local geodatabase. The location of the photos is added and edited in the Lightroom catalog using Lightroom's map module. These data, as already seen, are automatically imported into the Piwigo photo repository, which in turn feeds them via the web service to the Leaflet.js web map application. The website is developed in WordPress, and the key component is the genealogical trees, which are family trees that can display more information about each member of the tree and also connect this member to the photos of the Piwigo site. One member can be a part of more than one family tree, and there is the possibility to store and display a wide variety of information about the member. 
information about the events of the life of the member, like dates of birth, marriage, death, nicknames, details, and so on. The website, of course, can present other information about the village as well. The photos can be used in alternative ways to build stories in the form of timelines or other ways that the WordPress environment can offer. All the apps are oriented to be used over the internet, and by all, even though since the target users are the locals, the language is only Greek. At the same time, there is the ability to host them locally by using VR headsets and touchscreens to present the information from all the apps. A key component in this setup is the virtual tour, which can be viewed in a VR mode and has an autoplay mode to serve as a form of slideshow when no one is operating the touchscreen. This local setup can be installed as a small information kiosk and can be surrounded with printed material and photos. This is, hopefully, something that we will be able to find a fund to acquire the necessary equipment to set up in the Cultural Committee place in the future.